Okay, well, look, hello, my, my name is um, Alex Kingsbury and um, hello everyone and um, welcome to this event that um, Eve and the team have uh, done a really great job in putting together. So my thanks go to, to them and um, for organising such a great event, um, completely under their own steam and of their own initiative. Um, like I said, my name's Alex and I'm the Regional Director for APAC for Women in 3D Printing. And um, I just thought I would start with giving a little bit of an intro to Women in 3D Printing, who we are and what we do and how we um, uh, to then finally get in underway to the um, so, a little bit about Women in 3D Printing, our mission is to support an industry that's more representative of the world in which it operates. Um, so, that means you know, our world is 50 50 uh, male female, and we would love to see our industry represent that. Um, likewise, there's a lot of other groups that are minorities in our industry that aren't properly represented within 3D printing, and we would love to see that change as well. So, with regards to what are some of the things that we do? Things that we do. Um, there's quite a number. Primarily, um, the real grassroots of, 3D, of women in 3D printing is our chapter events. So these are chapters all around the world, um, lots of different locations, lots of different cities all around the world in which we hold in-person get-togethers. So really just to facilitate networking, connections um, and a mutual exchange of ideas. We also hold the Type Conference. conference every year. Type stands for Technology, Industry, People and Economics. It's the only all-female agenda, speaking agenda conference that we have um, in 3D printing that we know of. Um, so it's a virtual conference and uh, like I said, we run it every year and I'll talk a little bit about that next. Um, we have a Next Gen Mentorship Program, uh, which is all about getting young people into 3D printing and providing them um, and connecting them with mentors that can help them along in their career journey. Uh, we have some DEI programs, so DEI stands for D Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, um, and we run those across a number of different workplaces. We have a female speaker female database, database, so if you're looking for female speakers, um, you can find them um, on our female uh, speaker database. Uh, and there's lots of different women from all different types of fields within 3D printing uh, who are available to talk. Um, we can use uh, Women 3D Printing also as a hiring platform. So a number of different organisations host jobs um, that they're advertising through Women 3D Printing and um, it's a way for women to find out about those jobs. And there is the diversity for added manufacturing report. So this was something that started a little while ago, um, which, which is really about collecting all of the data across the industry um, with regards to our diversity metrics um, and tracking the reporting them and tracking them to see um, what the shape of our industry really actually looks like when it comes down to the data. So those, those have been done every year for the last couple of years. We now have a diversity, um, equity and inclusion subcommittee that is also putting out a series of mini reports that, doing, that are doing deep dives into specific subtopics of DEI um, concerns. Strength in numbers, we have loads of them. So we are across 36 countries, we have 95 plus chapters, um, we have lots of chapter ambassadors. Uh, many of our chapters have two, uh, two co-ambassadors. Um, we're across six different continents. Um, and as you can see, we have a 30,000 plus community of men, women and non-binary people. So one thing that's really important to note is while we are called Women in 3D Printing, we are very much an inclusive organisation. So our events um, and all of the things that we run are inclusive of men, women and non-binary people. So we really encourage everyone to participate and engage with uh, Women in 3D Printing. A little bit of a snapshot um, of women in 3D printing across the world. Like I said, you know, we're across six different continents and you can see that here. There's plenty of chapters, many more than can be mentioned here in the map. Um, but you'll see here, if we look at, you know, the APAC region, here we are over in this part of the globe. We have a board of directors uh, for women in 3D printing, starting with Nora Toure, who is our founder, um, who founded Women in 3D Printing back in 2015. And also our current president is, is uh, Kristen Mulheron. Um, and Sarah, Lisa and Janet are the current directors. It's really important that um, this organisation, it's a not-for-profit organisation. We do have a number of different corporate partners that provide us financial um, 
financial support uh, to cover the cost of all of our overheads. We're 100% a volunteer run organization. Um, but like I said, we, we use sponsorship to be able to cover the costs of running our organization. And it's really important that 100% of those sponsorship costs go towards um, our the running running of women in 3D printing. And so one thing that's really important is that we have a board of directors to provide some oversight and accountability, not only for our um, financial diligence, but also for the overall strategy of women in 3D printing and direction of the organisation. And um, like I said, we have a number of different regions, five different regions. Um, starting with Ruba, we have Ruba that heads up Africa and the Middle East. Alana leads, uh, leads the European um, region. Uh, Myra is the South American regional director. And Haley Ann is over in North America. And then finally, I am the APAC regional director. Within APAC, we have a number of different chapters and I've listed them all there. I won't run through them, but you can see there's loads. So particularly in China and India, we have a really great representation of chapters. Um, if there is a chapter here that you can't see, or if if you are in an area that is not represented here, um, it'd be really great to have a think about whether or not you can convince someone or maybe even yourself to volunteer as a chapter ambassador. Here are a couple of photos of some of the um, chapter events that we run and organize. So from all across the APAC region, um, you can see them all here. Lots of happy faces. Um, our get togethers uh, at a very basic level are just really just that, just a group of people getting together and talking. Um, but some events are a little bit more elaborate. So sometimes people will meet as a group for dinner, let's say. Um, sometimes they might meet at a site. So go to a 3D printing organization and do a tour of their factory. Um, and maybe they also run events as well that are a bit more formal. So it might be that they have an event that's co-branded with another event um, that women in 3D printing will put on together with another organization. Um, or sometimes women in 3D printing put on their own events as well. It's really led by the chapter amb ambassadors. Like I said, we're 100% volunteer run. So it's really up to the chapter ambassadors about um, how they want to run their chapter and the kinds of things that they want to do and the amount of energy that they're willing to put into their chapter. Like I mentioned, uh, we have an annual conference. So that's called Type, Type 3D Printing. So we're due to hold the next one on the 24th to the 26th of January next year. Um, we've run this uh, now two years in a row. Uh, next year will be our third year that we've run this. It really was precipitated by the pandemic. Um, we thought it would be great to get together um, virtually and be able to talk and exchange. Um, one of the really great things about Type is that it really represents our industry and represents women in 3D printing because we talk about all things related to 3D printing across the industry, like I said, technology, industry, people, and economics. Um, and, and like I said, the single defining feature of type is that it's an all-female speaker um, agenda. So it's the only conference of its type where you have only women talking about the kinds of work that they do. Um, we run across a number of different time zones and that's really just to respect the fact that Women in 3D Printing is a global organisation and we want to be able to include people from all around the world um, and give them an opportunity to speak, but also give them an opportunity to let other people, you know, listen to other people speak as well. Um, so we run across, we start in America and then we go over to Europe and we go to Asia Pacifica and then we also go back to America. We run for two days. Um, it's, a, it's a really long marathon, two days. Um, we try our best to stay up for all of it, but we don't always succeed. And then we have a third day, which is a career fair. Here's a snapshot of our current corporate member members. Um, really proud to have these uh, members on board uh, as supporting supporting the work that we do. Um, and yeah, very much appreciate um, this, this, the level of support that we attract from loads of different parts of the 3D printing industry. Like I said, if you didn't see your um, city up there on the list, please feel free to get in touch or maybe even talk to someone that you think would be good to volunteer as a local chapter ambassador um, to set up an, a chapter in your area. Um, it doesn't take too much uh, chapter events. We usually ask that we hold a minimum of um, four to six events 
per year. You don't have to be a woman to be able to be a chapter ambassador. We do have male chapter ambassadors as well. Um, and all you need to do if you want to express some interest or just even have an initial conversation about it is go to the Women in 3D Printing page and uh, click on the uh, Get Involved tab. This uh, QR code will take you straight there. Um, so that's all from me um, and from Women in 3D Printing. Thank you so much for uh, having me and um, best of luck for a successful conference. Thank you so much, Alex, for speaking about women in 3D printing. And thank you so much for your times as well. No worries. Okay. Um, so uh, I will need to ask the next speaker to go on. Okay. Um, okay. So I can share my screen right now. Right? Yes, please. We welcome Lucy who is uh, a <laughs> chief executive officer of TPM 3D. Right, yeah. So I'm sharing my screen. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm Lucy. Uh, I'm actually from Beijing. I didn't see my city <laughs> in the chart. So uh, maybe probably that uh, we can think about uh, from a chapter in Beijing also. Just uh, thanks. By the way, thanks for uh, you to invite me to this event. It's the first time I have been in this event. Uh, I'm happy to share some of my experience, experience and thoughts about 3D printing. Just a couple of words about myself, in case I, uh, most of you that we haven't been familiar with each other yet. Some, I, I think it's better to take some pictures from <laughs> here so you can see who are you talking about and uh, get some ideas that myself. So some pictures from my layer time and my uh, from my work. So uh, I'm a co-founder and CEO of TM, TPM 3D company, which is a professional 3D printing company. Prior to that, I was a general manager of Stress is Great China. As you might, you most of you might know that Stress is also a leading uh, uh, 3D printing company headquartered in the U.S. and uh, Israel. And, and before that, I was a general manager of uh, another American company, Novalis, in China. And I also worked for uh, uh, General Electric for more than 10 years. So this is my uh, professional uh, career. My academic uh, background is uh, engineering, mechanical engineering. Also, I got my master from Peking University on the business administration. Beyond that, uh, I'm a happy wife and mom. You can see from the pictures that I like uh, sports. It's probably I like outdoors, hiking, cycling, uh, sort of the things. And indeed, I'm a people that we like to uh, connect to the nature, also people. Uh, here, I want to do a little bit of introduction about TPM 3D company. Uh, TPM 3D, we are specialized in uh, one of the uh, 3D printing technology, which is the SOS, means selective laser sintering, which is a major uh, uh, 3D printing technology used in non-metal materials, use a, a polymer, use a polymer powder, is a powder bed technology. I use a nylon TPU and functional uh, polymer powders. So we manufacture the printers, also develop the materials, printing materials. Also, we are also providing the printing services. Uh, use our own printer, uh, of course, use our own printers and the materials. And one of the major applications use the SRS is that uh, medical sector. So recently, we just formed a digital medical center uh, based in, uh, in Zhongshan, inside the capital, to use the 3D printing uh, to produce some the rehabilitation uh, assistant uh, products, and also that uh, other applications like a surgery guide, which is that used in the medical uh, applications. Our primary business is still in China, uh, but we are expanding the business footprint to Southeast Asia, Europe, 
and North America. And just to give, give a little bit of uh, 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 introduction on how this technology works, how to print a short video uh, on this. The data uh, input And it is a power bed technology, so you see the powder feeding here. It's a barrels here. And the powder is spreading out. And then heat the powder and do the sinkering. Layer by layer. So that's the after printing that we. <laughs> This is a it forms the powder cake, and it takes the parts from the powder cake, and do the cleaning. Some of the polishing. And that's the final products. So I hope that I get a little bit of sense that how this part was printed. Use a later, uh, use a laser to sink her uh, the powder, the powder, and then the form the parts. Uh, <clears throat> since the materials is that uh, mainly is the nylon based uh, uh, poly polymer, the higher it has a better mechanical property. So it's used not only for prototyping. Like uh, other uh, non metal uh, printing technology, like SRA, FDM, we all can do this part, like a uh, prototyping. Also, that uh, SRS can be specialized in some functional parts, like the tooling. Here is also a small video, it's a fun video, I'd like to show you also. You see, here is a toy doll. You see the fixture here, the helmet. So the helmet actually here is printed by uh, SRS. So this is a printed. The helmet is actually is a fixture to fix the uh, toys, toy dog's head to make it stable for the higher plant. So actually, there's lots of a different type of the, uh, the toys, the dolls. So each toy has a different fixture to uh, stabilize their head. So there's require lots of uh, fixture with a different size. It's customized for different model of the toy. So this is the best application for a customized jigs and fixture. So this is a large uh, use in the uh, production line. And also that the best use for SS te technology to produce the end use parts. So here is the part you see the air duct. This actually is the end use part used in the uh, metal printer itself. And also this is the electrical uh, battery stand. This is also the end product. And all, the, all this is for the medical application, the pillows, the, the food standard. This is for the rehabilitation. Uh, assist in the devices. This is also that is an increasing application uh, for SS. And this is obvious. We can see this uh, uh, glasses frame and some uh, lamps is uh, fixtures. This is uh, this is more for decoration purpose. So uh, so in a in a whole that uh, SOS actually is that uh, very good to use for produce the functional parts, especially for the tooling and end use parts. This is the major applications actually uh, for SRS technology. The major industry include automobile, like this, all, the, all these parts are used in the automobile industry. 
and also consumer electronics rice cooker and also that uh, the tooling electrical tooling housing and this is a hair dryer this is a large uh, prototyping uh, needs and this is again this is the medical application and this part is increasingly uh, uh, demand we see from the market in recent years and the consumer goods most of the consumer goods can be printed as an end-use part like the shoes the sunglasses as the buttons and this uh, jewelry this is actually I do a little bit of post processing and it can be used directly and also for the arts and the creatives for the uh, this uh, decoration and this is the, some uh, 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 architecture and this is all print out print out with the very complicated structures so that um we see lots of uh, applications uh, uh, in, in, in the new everywhere, in industries, education, arts, medical, but still that uh, we see that the industry is growing. According to the Wall Street report uh, this year, we see that the industry is growing in the past decade, and also that is expected to grow in the next decade uh, largely from uh, from 15 billion to 85 billion. So uh, looks like it's a, a great uh, cargo, as 19% is great. But uh, think about think about that uh, the global manufacturing output last year is a 13 trading, is a 13 trading. This includes additive and uh, subtractive manufacturing. Compare with the AM, additive manufacturing, 15 billion. So this uh, count only for 0.1 percentage. So AM takes account for uh, 0.1 percentage of the total manufacturing output. So this OBV is not in a level, which means that still that applications compared with the subtractive manufacturing is very uh, little, very little. <clears throat> And I think the key things is that most of the applications for AM right now is still in the prototyping. Three in one. The entire application, if we look at that, we've seen the trend that most uh, more and more applications in the end use part. And this this percentage is increasingly uh, along with the decade, with along with the years. But still. Right now, last year's report that 33, one third of the applications fall in the end use part. And we can't plus the toolings and the jigs and fixtures, still that is only a 40, 43, 40 something. It's uh, less than half. Majority of the applications still in the prototyping. We know the prototyping is in the very beginning, very early stage of the production, and mainly sitting in the uh, R&D stage. So with a still small volume. So only if that when the AM technology was adapted and also that be used in the end use part mass production, that the volume will volume will that increasingly exponentially. Otherwise that it's hard to that we can uh, expect the huge growth ahead so so if we uh if we foresee uh that the mass production was more and more adapted in the am technology i think there's still uh some challenges that we need to look at and overcome first is that concept change that we uh, we uh, <coughs> think about that um, most of the production or most of product design still subtractive now and uh, if we want that do the mass production that use the AM technology we need to think the design from the very beginning very starting point use the concept of design for uh, active manufacturing this requires that um, the decision maker mindset change also that the industry standards that change to comply with the with the materials with that um, 
the measurement standards with that industry standards. There's lots of things need to be uh, lay out there and formed there so that uh, for the for the industrial producers and decision makers, they can that they can think about that change some concepts, change some manufacturing as production method into additive manufacturing. So the, I think for the standard part, this is very, very little right now. For the, especially for the medical and the industrial, those two sectors, how heavily they rely on the standards, the industry regularities, regularities. If no regulators, nobody can do the mass production. And this will require the early education. Then we have the AM mindset, AM the techniques from the young kids, from the K-12 uh, to the young designers. So when these kids, when these young men grow up, that they have the, this uh, built-in AM uh, mindset in their, uh, in their brain. And also that when they grow up to, the, to be designers, to be decision makers, to be consumers, so the adaption for active manufacturing will be much, much easier. And also they are talking about that uh, to use for the mass production for the end use part. There's also that new technology development for the material science. We need more and more materials can open up the wide applications. Right now that for metal and non-metal uh, printing materials is still, I think still very limited. Even that biomedical um, materials is still at a very developing in the very early stage, not much materials can be printed out. So this limited the applications. And for the machine itself, that if we compare with the subtractive manufacturing, that is speed, compatibility, and repeatability is the key things. That if we, we think about that, we do the mass production, and each output, each part is different. We do not have the highly, uh, highly uh, uh, unified products, which the repeatability is low. That nobody can bold to uh, do, do that. It's just that th this is not applied to the industry standards as well. So this is uh, requires that hardware technology, hardware technology development as well. And the last is that I think is kind of obvious. And nowadays for the uh, production itself, for the unit price, that compare with the additive, uh, compare with the subtractive, that the cost is still not in the same level. It's still not the same level. So when when the one day that with the technology movement, when the volume is uh, is uh, raising up and the cost is getting close, I think there's a will be more and more uh, additive technology will be adapt and used. Which is that is, is this is we can see the uh, industry can grow, uh, is potentially. So this challenge that require all of us that we are uh, as men and women that we are uh, industry players in the, in, to uh, look at and um, ready to invest in the technology, in the environment, in the standards, and in the uh, invest in the educations to forward. For, force this technology, force this environment to grow bigger. Okay, that uh, I think that what I want to say is just uh, up here because there's lots of things, lots of topics we can discuss. As the first time that I think that's uh, this what all I want to say today. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Lucy. It's great. To have you here, it's nice. So, thank you again. Okay. And hope you can become one of the Beijing chapter. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's considerable. about that. I think there are lots of industries, lots of uh, industry players, uh, in Beijing, lots of companies as well. Yes, I think you have a great potential as well. <laughs> thank you to give to the next speaker. Okay, next speaker, uh, Yi Jing. Hello, I'm here. Yeah, hi. Okay. I'm so worried. Hello. Why are you worried? Hi, Eugene. Sorry, it's the first time to see yeah. you here. 
<laughs> no problem. So, where are you from? I'm from China, uh, from Sichuan. Do you know the province? Oh, okay. Would you <laughs> like to share with but us? But I have lived in Germany for uh, more than 10 years, and last year I just uh, returned to China. Okay. Oh, that's nice. 10 years, that's a very long time. Yes, <laughs> spent off my beautiful times in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, would you like to share with us? Uh, okay, so uh, yes. we have the screen now. Hello, everyone. Um, it's a great honor to uh, uh, participate in this event. I'm Yi Ying and uh, co-founder of the x 3 d We are a spin-off of the uh, Fraunhofer Institute of Laser Technology in Germany. We are focusing on the micro metal additive manufacturing, uh, in particular uh, LPBF, uh, laser powder bed fusing, uh, which is one of the most important technology in the world of additive manufacturing. In 1995, LPBF was invented at the Fraunhofer ILT, and uh, in 2019, uh, the global market for additive manufacturing for metals, including system, material, and service, is around two billion. LPBF accounts for over uh, over eighteen percent of the market, uh, which makes it the dominant uh, technology for the uh, additive additive manufacturing of metals. And one of the most shining features of LPBF is that the printed parts show outstanding mechanical properties. Let's take a look at the video to see how it works. This is um, LPBF machine, and you can see here the white parts are the metal powders. In LPBF, the metal powder is applied using a scraper, and the laser beam is guided along um, calculated paths over the powder bed. As the powder, uh, as the laser melts the metal powder, the workpiece is produced laser lay, layer by layer in the intended shape. And you can see here, it's a printed part. And here are some applications of LPBF. And now let's take a look at uh, one of the most famous application of LPBF. I'll turn on our video here. SpaceX has been using 3D printing on the Super Draco thruster engine, which is an advanced version of the current Draco engine, engine that was used in SpaceX's Dragon, Dragon spacecraft to maneuver in orbit as well as during re-entry. In fact, Super Dracos were used on the crewed version of the Dragon 2 spacecraft. They are used to power the vehicle's launch escape system, which is completely integrated into the spacecraft. Indeed, SpaceX has been working with 3D printing for the past three years to perfect the technology for successful hardware flights. They 3D printed a Super Draco engine chamber manufactured from Inconel, a high-performance super alloy that was created using direct metal laser sintering, also known as DMLS. This part was designed and built in-house by SpaceX, which is something they like to do. A piece of metal comes to the SpaceX manufacturing process, and a rocket engine comes out. The company has also successfully fired the Super Draco engine chamber at a full thrust of 16,000 pounds per engine. The use of 3D printing helped minimize lead time by an order of magnitude compared to the traditional method of machining. This was from the first concept to the first hot fire test, which took slightly over three months to complete. In May of 2013, SpaceX completed the qualification of testing of the Super Draco, including multiple starts, extending firing durations, and extreme off-nominal propellant flow as well as temperature tests. If necessary, each Super Draco has to be restarted multiple times. They can also use deep throttle, which provides astronauts huge amounts of power as well as enhances precision in space. SpaceX mentioned that during the hot fire test, the Super Draco engine was fired in two different profiles, launch escape and landing burn, as well as successfully throttled at thrust levels from 20% and 100%. 
The chamber itself was fired more than 80 times during hot fire. SpaceX is absolutely ruthless in its rocket engine tests. There is no cutting corners to save money or any process skipped to save time. This is what is needed to operate successfully at the cutting edge of any technology. The eight engines in the Dragon version 2 launch can generate more than 120,000 pounds of axial thrust to propel astronauts to safety if an emergency occurs during launch. The launch escape system also enables astronauts to land the spacecraft using propulsion that is quite accurate and pinpoint. This makes the Dragon version 2 spacecraft completely and rapidly reusable, as well as capable of being refueled and reflown numerous times. With 3D printing, durable and high-performing engine parts can be constructed at a fraction of the time and cost when compared to traditional manufacturing methods. In fact, in 2013, Musk described how the company was planning to construct the parts for its Merlin rocket engines using the Leap Motion Controller constructed via the Oculus Rift Virtual Reality headset, as well as a high-end metal 3D printer. The construction of both the Super Draco and Merlin engines were vital to the evolution of the company's spacecraft program. In fact, the Falcon 9 rocket that was recently powered to orbit contained nine Merlin engines that gradually throttled towards the end of the first stage flight to limit the launch of vehicle acceleration as the rocket's mass decreased with the burning of the fuel. The Falcon 9 also has Draco thrusters that enabled the Dragon to maneuver while in orbit, as well as eight Super Dracos coupled together. This was crucial to the mission in the event that there could have been a major malfunction detected. The computer was programmed to instantly fire the Super Dracos, blasting the capsule away from the Falcon 9. Nevertheless, it's been quite a successful existence for SpaceX thus far, with about 20 years in the field of developing state-of-the-art space hardware. You can see here, LPBF uh, uh, have been used for a lot of amazing areas like um, engines for rocket. Uh, and now we will talk about our technology, Micro LPBF. It's uh, the development from LPBF. And first of all, I would like to introduce our team to you. Our core team members are majorly from the Fraunhofer IIT. Of course, I have introduced it. And our general manager, Mr. Liao Wishen, and technical uh, director, Mr. Lucas Maslin, were both researchers at the Fraunhofer IIT with many years of experience in the field of 3D micro uh, metal printing for industrial uh, projects. And uh, the micro uh, 3D metal printing has three major advantages compared to conventional machines. First, in terms of precision, the typical um, accuracy of the conventional printed parts is uh, 50 to 200 microns. Our technology allows the laser focus diameter to reach an um, accuracy, of, accuracy of 20 microns. The minimum layer thickness dumps to 5 microns due to the special powder fading system. Printing accuracy is greatly improved. As a result, the typical um, accuracy of our printed parts is 2 to 10 microns. Second is the surface roughness. Uh, of course, the surface roughness is also greatly reduced. The typical roughness of our printed parts comes to a minimum of uh, an RA1 uh, microns to 3 microns. You can see here uh, in this comparison of our printed stents uh, through the conventional uh, LPBF and our micro LPBF. Third, there is a critical point for micro 3D metal printing uh, 45 degrees. When the angle of a structure is less than 45 degrees, it is necessary to in um, increase supporting parts to achieve a solid printing. For example, here and our micro 3D metal printing enables support free one step forming with a minimum unsupported angle of 10 degrees by many structures. As you can see in this comparison, conventional printing requires a lot of supports, like here and here and here. While the, with the micro LPBF, we can print the similar structures without any supports. As a result, of course, the um, material waste and the post-processing are also uh, greatly reduced. And um, here are some typical structures we have successfully achieved with the micro LPBF. 
For example, the porous structure here. We can directly print porous structure with a um, diameter of 100 microns. And the overall tolerance is about uh, 2 to 3 microns. As you can see here in the picture 1 to picture 3, uh, in addition to regular porous uh, structures, we can also um, print irregular structures like shaped porous. As here is also another typical uh, structures we have printed, the thin walled uh, structures. As you can see here, we can reach a thickness of about um, 30 microns here of a very thin wall. Here is another uh, printed structure, the um, capillary structure, with the finest top of a uh, of 30 micron di uh, diameter. You can see here, and this kind of structure will show a very good hydrophilic effect. We can see here the water will be uh, dropped directly by the structure. And here are some typical application areas for us. Uh, these are the aerospace industry, the medical industry, the marine industry, and the microelectronic industry, and the molding uh, industry. For example, for the uh, medical industry, we are now printing parts for uh, minimal, minimally um, invasive uh, surgery and or joints for um, surgical robot. And now I would like to show two parts for you to fill our micro LPVF. And this one is a uh, um, conventional printed part. You can see that um, the size and the roughness. And this is the same one and we have printed with our technology. It's very small and with the same structure, but um, with a much better um, accuracy and much better surface roughness. And that's all for my uh, presentation and thank you very much for listening and please feel free to contact me if you have any further questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Piju. Thank you so much for your time today that have come to our webinar and to speak to the audience regarding about this technology. It's quite refreshing for me because I never see this technology before. So I'm quite excited today actually. Yes, it's also a very big challenge for us to uh, find the uh, proper applications for this technology. Yeah, ah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for coming. Uh, um. Hello. Kenny? Kenny? Yes, yes. Hi, hi. Darren. How are hey. you, everyone? Oh, so oh. Darren and Kenny is here. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so it's my turn. Hello, everyone. I am Abby from Shenzhen Transit Company. It's my pleasure to communicate with you here. In the year 2018, I have returned from Thailand and back to China. I have gone through a lot of interviews, but you know, the market is very competitive in China. So I have come to this company, Transit Ready in Shenzhen. I was very impressed by the technology and I was employed by company as their sales during that time. After years working and with all enrichment class I have taken, I learned and grow. Currently, I am the regional marketing manager of Transit, mainly the European and American uh, region. Here are some of the products of my company been working on. Uh, Transit is a manufacturer of desktop 3D printers and filaments. It was founded in 2015. 
At present, there are X5SA series products, D01 series products, and XY series products in the market. Uh, XY, uh, X, X5SA series are mainly large size uh, machines with core XY structure. And the D01 series is many uh, complete machine with box structures. And the XY series is many a 3D printer of gantry structure. Just the last year, we launched the independent dual extruder printer, named the Jenny S. And recently, we have optimized a version of Gen uh, named the Jimny. XS on this basis. And recently, we saw the correct one 3D printer with high performance price retail. Here, I would like to show you guys our Halloween printer design, which use our correct 3D printer. Um, if, hello, if can you have a uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so now um are you able to see my computer with the screen? Yes, yes. Okay, so here is uh Chun Z uh the three the videos. extruder, a variety of filament can be used. The clock one of moving assist use all metal OSG guide rim. It's full metal. Um, I believe many people have a good impression on linear guide rim, but what I want to say is that is that OSG is also an excellent guide rail. You can uh, intuitively check the contact survey surface between pulley and the uh, guide rail. It's very easy to clean and maintain, and the service life is also improved. Uh, this thing is no cheaper than linear guide rail. The, the in, in Installation can be complete only with small screws with all same length and uh, size. Important, uh, important thing is easy installation and the structure and the whole end are very stable. Uh, we can see the key, key bed and the ring head is very stable. 
uh, it only takes 10 minutes for installation. Clock One is such a simple, portable, and easy use machine. Thank you. Mm. Hello, this is Darren. Darren. Hi. Here we are. Hi. Yes. Hi, Darren. Are. How are you? I want to introduce uh, this great 3D thing. Very sweet, deep printer print like uh, this. This is the model, model printed by the clay 3D printer. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Can I introduce my the clay 3D printing uh, technology? It's not like the FDM 3D printing. You see the structure, and uh, the print head move along the profile and bones layer of the model. You see, th but this one do not have the feedback. It's very easy to to operate. Do not no need to hit the button and and feedback. And this this one is the. Uh, the, it, it doesn't use the filament. Uh, this uh, clay we use this motor to to push the the clay from this to okay, to the to the clay okay. yeah. And uh, like like a DM three D printer, clay three D printers move according to computer instructions. And before it, they made a real layer by layer to create 3D models uh, like, like this. And the difference with the FDM 3D printer is uh, just uh, it doesn't need to hit. Uh, and without the hot end, in addition, the uh, consumable used by FDM. 3D printer is a plastic filament, but we use the gray. We can use uh, use it again. Uh, it means that uh, if you bring the print this gray, you can uh, if you bring fairly, you can you use water to mix the gray, and, and and then the material can be used again. And the you, uh, you use users of the Korean three and the uh, are many used in the education, cultural creation, art, sculpture, family, and craft, flowers and other files. This kind of three D three D Korean printer is quite popular in education for beginners interested in 3D printing, family ed education, and school education. It is an enlightening 3D printer and a valuable effort for pottery and ceramic lovers who realize their design designs ideal. Okay. Um, more uh, this this model is we call uh Mo, Mo one, Mo one Cray three D printer. Uh, it's it is more easier to operate compared with the FDM three D printer. The Cray printer is easier to operate because it is more conven convenient and easy to print. In the in terms of platform and leveling, it's very easy to level. Uh, uh, yeah, and you don't need to temperature setting and printing material selection. In addition, the this script printer can be used alone, uh, used alone, and does no not require an air compress compressor. And also, it print fast. 
it growing very fast about uh 8 80 percent faster than 3d print fdm 3d printers yes and the green accurate is up to two millimeter we can provide zero point two to five millimeter nozzles with different diameters printing materials are safe and easy to open create is cheap and environmentally and friendly the low material does not have any chemical ad additive so it's suitable for the creative production of daily ceramics on decoration items yes the name is uh, the clay the clay 3d yeah. printer name is the moral one moral one yes it's the the name <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> I think yes, today there is a bit and the right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much, AB, and your team for coming to the event and appreciate your times and efforts. And hope to see you soon, okay? Okay. See you soon. So bye thank bye. you. Bye bye. 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 Okay, so now Jason, are you there? Hi yeah. Would you mind to show a video to let all our audience to see who are you? <laughs> okay, okay Hello Hey yeah. So yeah, it's Jason and his wife. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So they are attending our events. Jason is a VP, Vice President of Two Tree Surgeons. So thank you so much for coming to our events. And from my understanding, the company has been producing a 3D printer for other company. Do you want to share some of the experience with us? Oh, yes. Hey, yes. Hello, Eve. Hi. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was an honor to be invited to this event, and it was a pleasure to talk with you. Two Cheese has always concentrated on 3D printer manufacturing and uh, a lab retailing. We have been dealing with dealers, 3D printer company from over the world in reproducing and improving their products. Here I want to share some share the most impressive and touch painful story for me. With all of you looking at this video, few years back there was one girl in his 50s come to me with his incomplete design of a 3D printer he wanted to make, but I rejected him because the design of his machine incomplete and needed furthermore needs corrective software. Years later, I met this man again. He told me, he has gone through study and learn design in programming and become certificate designer and software engineer and he wants to continue making his printer. I was very curious by his presentation patient. So I asked him why he spent so many years from design to study software just because want to make a printer and his replay first I have received a 3D printer from a friend 
It started inspired me to learn design. I enjoy seeing my own creation to life and use it for the right purpose. But I still feel there is a lacking of something in the machine, like function, stable parts. Uh, if we can create a stable and better machine, more people can create their own design and make it to life. This is for the purpose of our future generation. Let all people able to purchase a 3D printer and bring their creation to life. After hearing his story, our R&D team has spent months in making dreams become reality. This is something we are very proud of doing. Years passed, but this story keeps in my mind. Of course, after so many years, we are still close to friends and working closely on different projects. That's very good of you guys for doing that. <laughs> I think it's great to have uh, all people to have uh, dreams and then to let the dreams come true. Definitely, it will be good. And I also realized that your company has been into laser engraving machines. Do you want to share some uh, interesting things about this product? Because I see that right now laser engraving has been very popular worldwide. Oh, yes, Eve. We are into laser engraving machine now. The TS3 all-in-one enclosed laser engraver was sold 114 street on Kickstarter as our first enclosed safety machine. After that, we have TS2 come out, which is a large size with air assistance location, which is popular between in the tourists. These two models had been through very tiring development periods with money be design, testing and cheat. It takes several months to get final version to produce. One of the very young engineers in the team told me that after doing through two projects, he felt that he had got a lot of experience from the hard work of developing the project. He was only 22 years old and already done two Kickstarter projects and 10 other local projects, including design 3D printer, laser engraving for other companies. Hmm, that's very sweet of you guys. I think it's good that you allow the younger generations to get involved in this project. And can I know that um, does your company also produce your own uh, filaments? Yes, we have created our own factory producing our own filaments. Here is a video presentation. Are you able to share? If not, uh, I shall share the video. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me help you to share the video. Okay, uh, so this is a factory of two trees for the filaments manufacturing. And I shall play this video. Oh, that's a huge battery you have over there. I think yeah. this battery was about 2,000 square meter. And right now, you have provided with some of the advance in the product equipment and etc. So I hope that you can have a success. And does your company also sell your product to other country? Like what country do you sell to? Oh, yes. Uh, we have seven warehouses over the world 
in delivering our products to our customers in Europe, North America, and Australia, and we are expanding. Wow, that's a lot of countries. That's yeah. good to see you guys expanding yourself, and just wanted to get to know because since you are uh, in the reproducing of a three D printer, and. We want to share some of the internal news about what is the latest product you are uh, upcoming. Mm, yes, I'm very glad to share some company news with you here. First of all, our company is still maintaining steady business growth and investment in research and development. In the past three years, since the COVID, the marketing has declined and become more competitive. So we have invested a lot of in product quality, improvement, developing new products and doing more market research. We have always believed that products are not only about technology but also about awesome that For new products all I can say is that we will have good news to share with you at the end of the year. Thank you for the honors. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason, for you and your wife to attend the events. And I think Jason is a bit quiet. <laughs> okay. He's a bit mm-hmm. uh, shy to attend for the event. So that's why his wife had been uh, talking and speak on his behalf. But appreciate mm-hmm. you guys for coming. And thank you so much for attending the events. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi all. Uh, okay. Uh, now we are having our Women in 3D Printing Day 2 events. And we would like to thank yesterday's speaker, Lucy Ejin. Lyra, AB, and Jason for attending out the events. First, we have Lucy. She is a CEO of TPM 3D. They are a well-versed company in SLS printing. And Lucy has so showed us the whole process of SLS 3D printing and the whole purpose of SLS benefit the society, which is a real enlightenment. We really hope to see her become our upcoming Beijing chapter ambassador. Second, we have our speaker, Eugene from Sway. She has an uh, interesting new material to share with us, which is called LPBF. If you are not sure, it was Laser Powder Bake Fusion, which is a family of metal alloy comparable with uh, titanium, aluminium, stainless steel, and etc. It's a new type of metal 3D printing strong, lightweight, and more stable than traditional manufacturing and can be used in space printings and medical and construction, automation metal printing. It's a real revolution in the metal printing industry. And we have a third speaker, which are Lara, but due to the copyright issue, we are appealing to let her speech to be shown to us in a separate video and she is also our woman in 3D printing our Shanghai ambassador and the CEO of Esperant which is a very popular company in China and they are very well versed in wedding 3D print and accessory for my students in Singapore majority I have mentioned before this wedding 3D print concept and they have done very well and I see them on the first in 2014 at the TCC event in Shanghai and right now they've been doing more into design, training, printing and etc. So hopefully we can do a one-to-one interview with them soon and we'll be able to show you more details after we have appealed for the uh, release of the video. And for the fourth speaker yesterday is AB, who is a region manager of Chonzi 3D printer company. She has brought her team, Darren and Kenny on board. 
She is also our woman in 3D printing, she's a German ambassador. The company has come up with something interesting. It's a desktop ceramic printer, which is a good use machine, and we can use it for education, coaching students in construction, food, and 3D printing. I believe this is a good machine we are looking forward to. And our fifth speaker, which is Jason and his wife, Angel. Uh, Jason is a vice president of Duchi Sengjun, a 3D printer manufacturer. He was a very shy man and took a lot of convincing to get him on board with us. And there are one of the 3D printer manufacturers who are specialized in redesign and produce. 3D printer for other company. So recently they have brought a 2000 square meter factory to manufacture a 3D filament for FDM printing. Yesterday they have even shared with us the video of the new factory. And seeing businesses grow is satisfaction. Hopefully we will be able to show more exciting stuff today and right now, we welcome Professor Anna from U Porter. And Anna, are you there? Yes, hello, I'm here. Thank you, Anna, for coming to our event today. And really appreciate that. Thanks, Heath, for your kind introduction and for hosting this event. Uh, Hopefully we can <laughs> meet more often. And, yes, of course. Uh, it's a, it's a pleasure being here with uh, all of you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will hand Thanks. the screen to you right now. <laughs> okay. Thanks. So, I will um, uh, accomplish my uh, talk with uh, a very small presentation. Um, so you can uh, uh, accompany it uh, better. So I will um, I will talk a bit about three D printing, but uh, regarding construction industry, construction and uh, civil engineering. Uh, at first, I will I will briefly introduce my university and myself and uh, now talk a bit how we arrive here on 3d printing and what are the main challenges and the main research line we are working on here so, i am from porto portugal this is of Spain and france I don't know if you already been here, but Porto is a, a, a very nice, very beautiful city. I hope all of you can visit us uh, one day. I'm sure you will enjoy. You have a, we have a lot of monuments, heritage, food. I'm sure you will have a good time. In the Porto downtown, in the city center, the historic center, we have the rectory building. This is the rectory building of my university, University of Porto, which was established some time ago. And this is our uh, uh, engineering campus. This is uh, engineering school of uh, University of Porto, and I am here in the civil engineering department. So, and that's it, that's me. So I'm a postdoc research in the construction and the structures RD center, and I work specifically in the structural comp concrete group. And my uh, research files are actually not limit, but mainly uh, technology and eco-friendly uh, advanced cement basing materials. Uh, 3D printing for construction, performance based design and optimization, valorization of local waste materials, and supplementary cementitious materials. 
So let's go ahead. I will introduce with you what is a civil engineer uh, and what world and in our society and then talk a bit how we arrive at 3d printing what was the the way how we arrive here and actual uh, building materials and challenges that we as engineers and other construction stakeholders face are facing so engineering, as the name says by itself, it's uh, ability to create, develop or understand or undertake and accomplish something. Civil engineer as a key role in our society that probably if you are not from the area, you are not aware, but uh, civil engineers have a key role in the urbanization, in the environment, in different structures. Uh, and sustainability, which are key pillars of uh, a society, of a country, or of uh, a region. So I will play a small video about it. What is civil engineering? Civil engineers combine creativity with imagination and technical expertise to design our built environments. But as a civil engineer, what will you do? You'll be designing sustainable buildings and bridges that bring people together. You'll be developing transport systems fit for our future. You'll be benefiting humanity by providing clean water, energy, food and shelter. You'll be building a world resilient to climate change and natural disasters. Civil engineers are improving the quality of the built environment for all. Are these things you want to achieve? You might become a civil engineer if you like developing ideas to change the world applying maths and science in an imaginative way, collaborating with others to work through challenging tasks, questioning how things are designed and built, using technology to find the most sustainable solutions, and seeing your ideas turned into reality. Studying civil engineering involves learning how to be a designer, developing the skills to tackle the world's sustainability issues, taking inspiration from experts in industry and academia, carrying out experiments to see how materials and structures behave, extending the boundaries of what is known through research, going on field trips to enrich your learning. By doing these things, you'll gain more than civil engineering theory. You'll have skills in design, problem solving, project management and creative thinking. You can work in industries like structural and architectural engineering, water engineering, geotechnical engineering and transport and infrastructure preparing you to make an impact on the world sustainably. Let's go ahead. So, but uh, the construction was not like that all the time. In the beginning, uh, we, our ancient, uh, uh, the ancient, build with uh, uh, they are nomadic so they were they were moving around uh, uh, most often so they use building materials they are locally available like bones uh, leaves branch thus just to protect themselves from uh, the weather and from the animals because they will not stay there for too, so long uh sometime uh, after then the, the, we start building with uh, wood and here you can see is more like a, a more similar to an engineering structure we have the roof uh, we have the pillars so here we start to became more fixed in uh, in the places but also using local materials during the bronze age uh, as the name says by itself the bronze and the copper emerge and they are used to do tools and those tools like saws for instance for hunting and use it also for uh, construction and in those times they used to build like also using mud 
the, and protect themselves by the enemies, by a animals, predators, and so on. A big step in the construction was also the Iron Age, where we start using iron also for tools and for weapons, but there is also some similarities with the previous age. They live under communities, but start to construct more um, in a more sophisticated way. And one of the breakdowns was uh, in the Iron Age was the first emergency of kind of cement, the Roman cement, so you may know, which is a mix of hashes and lime and bring fragment, fragments. So uh, this kind of material was used in, by Romans, not only for uh, walls, but also for a lot of monuments that uh, we can see even today, like arches, barrels, dams, and so on. Uh, in the Middle Ages, the building techniques were all, are also evolution, start to take uh, advances, some kind of engineering gadgets to construct, and was a remarkable time for construction. And in these times, fortifications, castles and cathedrals were building, and we can see some of them still today. But one of the make, one of the break dots for the construction and other industries, of course, was the industrial revolutions, which brought a heavy growth of um, uh, of industrialization, and as a consequence, new building materials and new construction techniques, not more uh, not more so dependent on man force, but also take advantage on machine power, and also. New building materials can now be um, uh, formulated like iron, steel, glasses, and architects and engineers start working together to give shape to a lot of building and infrastructures. So this is the kind of building materials that we have today like concrete, brick, stone, glass, steel, but all of them with different properties and uh, one, most ones use it more often uh, than the others because technical and um, economic issues and uh, uh, so on. So let's take a look of what kind of building materials we have today.
So this is the kind of uh, building materials that we mostly use today. But uh, one of the break thoughts for the construction industry and for us as civil engineering was the emergency of Portland cement. Uh, in the 19th century, which is the main constituent of concrete. It, it has a binder, like the Roman cement. This is Portland cement, which uh, reacts with water and gives, uh, involves the aggregates and gives rise to concrete, which is a massive uh, building material. I'm sure you are uh, in uh, some somewhere where you can see uh, you can see, but you, you may not see, but concrete is there for sure. So, I don't know if you are aware, but concrete is the second uh, uh, most consumed materials in the world, just after water. And some, um, some researchers uh, call his concrete age, that we are living in a concrete age. And this is a small piece of concrete where you can see, uh, I will not uh, enter in too many technical uh, details, but uh, concrete is thus essential for a sustainable building environment development and also for enable the digitalization in uh, the construction sector. As such, uh, new construction methods are See, and multi concrete materials. Recently, we uh, we found us in the fourth industrial revolution, which has been affecting other files like medical, fashion, and also uh, construction, namely by. Uh, uh, the 3D printing uh, construction methodology, which is basic like uh, computer controlled sequential layering of the material to create a three dimensional shape, which can be, for instance, a house. And it. saving materials and also it is especially attractive for complex or variable uh, shapes. I would like to show what did us. Let's see if it's... Properties, quality control methods, 
more sustainable uh, concretes. Uh, we also still face some printer and pumping uh, limitations. And we also need some new design structural tools and modeling. In my, uh, in my group, in my research group, one of the main front uh, actions in the point of material science is develop uh, waste materials we, we are locally available and which, are, which has no uh, added value. So we can incorporate in this composite material some wastes which, uh, which we have been working on and we know that there is no, no deleterious effects either for women or for the material and we can uh, compose materials um, or to waste are actually landfill it. So this is uh, one of the main uh, actions of our group. So if you feel interested in the file, uh, let me know. So this is some experience that we have been doing. This is uh, in the lab. You can see here the material. It's ready for pumping. Before pumping, they they keep mixing to to make them fresh. And here, for instance, we can see an example of a small prototype uh, uh, printing. It is for uh, this white cement for structural structural and architectonic purposes. So, and uh, that's uh, all for uh, today. Thanks for uh, listening and thanks for being there. Thanks, Eve, uh, for your uh, invitation. Thank you so much, and uh, I really love the idea of these uh, 3D printing constructions. And I think it's really a revolution for the future generations. And the good things about this is that the recycle of the material to be used, I think it's great. Really Thanks appreciate so much, taking your time today. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Liang, okay. I saw you, Tony. Hi. <laughs> Are you? Hi, Tony. I do. Yes, how are you? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm fine, of course. Yeah, we just have Anne. Uh, she That's has good. spoken about her 3D construction uh, project that she was working on. And it's really something marvelous. And now we have yes. Tony, which is a lead educator in the 3D printing project for Fawi. Am I right? The name is Fawi, right? Just uh, yes. to make sure my pronunciation is correct. Yes. But we guess too. And we shall have him hang over to him. And he can talk to us about more what he has been doing in the school project. Okay. Tony, so I hand over to you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So let me see how I share my screen are you seeing the presentation yes i can see okay so uh, thank you very much so my presentation is about integrating 3d printing in a teaching and learning process and uh, we have 3d printing school projects working with the schools in rwanda uh, my name is tony and uh, we are located in uh, Kigali, Rwanda. So, um, 
first school is an all girls school uh, that specializes in teaching science for the girls between the ages of 11 to 18 years. It's located in Kigali City in Rwanda. Rwanda is uh, a country located in East Africa. You can see that it is uh, uh, bordering Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi, and uh, Tanzania. So it's located in East Africa. Then uh, that's a picture of the school, the Fargo School. And uh, as I told you, we have about uh, 820 girls who are specializing in studying science subjects. So that is our campus. It goes beyond that. And this is one of our laboratories where we do our uh, 3D printing from. So this is uh, the project background. Uh, 3D printing is gaining momentum all over the world in the different schools. In the Rwanda schools have started to look for ways to integrate this technology to meet the education needs of the future. So having a 3D printer in a school is like having a small factory in a school that enables students to achieve their dreams. So we have a case study of the 3D printing project at Fowl School. So at Fowl School, uh, girls have been able to work on the MacBook using the MacBook replicator mini 3D printer. Uh, I hope we, we all know that. To print objects like small tables, a receptor uh, blocks, it is anything that's interesting. And uh, usually the materials needed uh, in this project, we, we have a 3D printer, uh, rolls of the plastic 3D printing filaments. Uh, usually it's made of uh, a product called the pillar. So the printer has a part that hits and pulls the plastic which is called the extruder. It will be good, uh, it's always good to have more than one because it tends to, to become faulty. So in the case of malfunctions, we usually need to have more than one. So uh, this picture you see here, that is the MacBot duplicator mini, which we use. It's a small uh, printer for education purposes. So a single printer uh, usually needs a single computer, an internet connection, that's all is needed. Usually to transfer, because uh, we've been using Tinkercad, uh, which is a software in where we can get the 3D print models. Students can be able to uh, transfer these uh, 3D print models from Tinkercad, and then connect them to the printer then uh, students are able to import the design. So they don't design them, they just uh, kind of import the 3D models from the Tinkercad software, which is online software. And uh, we put them on a flash disk and be able to print them. So this is the printer uh, which we have been using at the school. So these are some of the few models that students have been able to, to print, as, as you can see, just for education purposes. This one is just a small table, which I'm, I'm holding, a table where you can put uh, utensils. So the benefits of using 3D printing in schools, uh, 3D printing enhances successful learning experiences, and this one brings uh, the visual learning. The science teachers are able to print teaching aids, like simple machines, like the heart, atomic models easily by using 3D printing so that they can be able to use them uh, during classes. So it gives like students the chance to kind of visualize what they are learning, studying.
uh, 3D printing also cultivates the students' interest and curiosity in the use of technology and STEM education. So most students have gained interest in studying science subjects because they have been involved because they have been involved uh, in the 3D printing projects. The 3D uh, printing has enabled the students to develop a lot of skills while using uh, the, 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 the printer, like a creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, communication skills. 3D printing also uh, increases girls' interest in STEM because there are not so many girls uh, who are, you know, who are involved in studying STEM and taking on STEM careers. But once they get involved in the 3D printing projects, they get interest in the uh, state taking on STEM careers. Uh, this is these are some of the experiences uh, which we got from the project at our school at Fawe. Uh, students get excited when they print things. Students need to 3D print large models they, they, because they, they prefer bigger models, not smaller ones. Students could not print successfully on their first attempt, so it required them so many times to do the printing. Uh, the 3D printer takes too much time to prepare the file for printing. Actually, it takes almost like hours. Like some of the uh, models we are printing, it will take like 12 hours, which is really not very normal since uh, we have less time uh, during school time. So it requires a lot of time. Uh, students spend too much time also on fixing their models and completing their work. And this made some students not to be happy as they had to wait for long in order to get their, uh, their models. And then to print successfully, we also require a fast computer because the slow computers we do not make the project, uh, the, the printing exercise to be very fast. Uh, after the few models students printed, they were able to acquire 21st century skills like collaboration, communication, and creativity, among others. Uh, also, some of the experiences we, we saw, students prefer designing 3D models to transform their ideas into physical objects other than importing them from 3D uh, software, the Tinker cut. So they, they, they prefer themselves, the students, to design the models instead of importing them from Tinker cut. Uh, also, there were, there's a need to train teachers and students in 3D designing and 3D printing as many students uh, face difficulties while engaging in 3D printing activities. Uh, also, another experience, students needed to learn how to color the 3D models. It's still a challenge that we, we had. And also, what we experienced is that teachers should not focus on the process of 3D printing, but rather focus on the process of designing and helping the students to embrace making mistakes to enable them to acquire 21st century skills. So in that way, uh, it is the students prefer not to, to import already designed 3D models from TinkerCAD software, but they prefer to design the models by themselves. Uh, the challenges that we have, the challenge that we have in this project is that we have, uh, we don't have enough 3D printers. Actually, we have one 3D printer and in uh, about 80 girls, 800 girls. And of recent, the one print also has is a bit. So also the filaments, when we are still using a printer, we used to have lack of filaments to cut out for the exercise, printing exercise. And also uh, teachers don't know how to design 3D print models. Uh, they just import from TinkerCAD software. So students don't get the skills, the 21st skills. So there's a need for training teachers. So that's all what I have for you. Thank you. Oh, Tony, that's very interesting. You have so many girls 
they are into this. Is it um? Yes. Will you want to show us some of your project that some of your girls have been printing? I think it's kind of interesting, you know, to see so many girls who are into it. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I, I think I didn't prepare the, the pictures. Oh, okay, okay. It's okay. But next so time I will try to do that. Yeah, sure, yes. sure, sure. I think it's quite interesting to see your site. You have done so well. And having so many people, so many girls get into it. Um, Thank you so much. You, can I have one question? Yeah, sure. Because yes. Suwati also into education as well. <laughs> yes, yes, and I am quite, you know, the, the moment he mentioned the challenges which he is kind of facing, you yeah. know, um, when it comes to training students and teachers, they are quite genuine. And I have also come across the challenges uh, which Tony has rightly mentioned. Uh, one thing which I would like to understand from Tony is since uh, there is a challenge is uh, the lack of 3D printing filaments. So from where do you get your filaments? Do you have any any local supplier for uh, filaments? Or how do you do it? No, yeah, usually we, because we, we, we got this printer from the US, so we, we have to order from the US, but even getting them here is not easy. So it has been a very big challenge. Yes. And it's expensive i would say and that's how you cannot give it away to students to waste it you have to be very mindful of how they are using the materials the printers uh, who does your uh, you know uh, printer maintenance because one or the other time everything keeps on breaking down sometimes nozzle will be gone extruder fan everything will be you know so who does that for you yeah actually that's another challenge because this is a very new technology in our country in rwanda so when our printer got faulty so we had to to rely on the supplier through emails and then to see what parts are supposed to be replaced but up to now actually we, we are still waiting it's like three months oh my plus. god that's that i think those are the challenges which are the hurdles I would say, uh, which is not letting people explore more and more 3D printing because of these things. But yeah, here back in India, at least uh, these kind of things get resolved easily. And now we have started making uh, printers and filaments in house as well. So yeah, I think that there's a, it's a great uh, initiative by you, the way you are working with girls. Uh, you have chosen, you know, uh, the gender gap in additive manufacturing industry very correctly because there are very less women in STEM already and it's, it's a great initiative. I really appreciate your work, uh, Tony, whatever you are doing in, in Rwanda and I, if I visit the country, I'm definitely going to visit uh, your school for sure. Thank you so much for, you know, giving your presentation. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. Over to you, uh, Eve. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tony, for your time and showing us your marvelous work you have done over there. And also, you have you. really inspired a lot of young generations into STEM education, which really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, and right now we have Xuetong, Stara, and she has come online. Hi, Stara. Good night, everyone. Good night. Yeah, I should say good night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now it's our evening. Nice to meet you, Eve. How are you? Yeah, hi, fine. I've been a busy and stressful day. I think today again I have drank like two coffee. <laughs> Yesterday, three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah been preparing all the work. Thank you for, for coordinating all of us. Yeah, thank you so much. So, Sarah, I shall hang over to you and let you intro. Okay. 
just now. Okay. Let me share. Yeah, let me share my my screen. Uh, share screen, right? Just go share screen. Did you all see yes. my slide? Yes, I can see. Thank you. Hi, uh, folks. My name is Xue Dong. You can call me Stella. And I work for East Stroudsburg University of Pennsylvania Art and Media and Design Department. And my concentration focus is product design and 3D design. So today I'd like to share about how I incorporate 3D printing in the product design curriculum to make my class, uh, to make some effort into my teachings. And so we're located in the Pennsylvania, US. So my slide will uh, include an uh, introduction and I will quickly introduce lab facility and my research work. And then I call I incorporated 3D printing in the product and classes. And then we do the Q and A at the end. I'm so glad to be here with all your folks. A little bit about, about myself, before I came to the education, um, I worked as a tooling engineer in the car industry for two years. And I served a lot of customers such as Volvo, Ford, uh, Ford Nissan, uh, BMW, and I also worked for other fields such as gardening, consumer, and uh, after two years, um, then I joined East Stroudsburg University in 2019, and I teach 3D design, 2D design, products at one, Studio 1, Studio 2, and 3, material process and internship. So, so these two pictures showed my, uh, my different classes. And the lab facility, uh, our departments, uh, we have multiple uh, different concentrations. We have students in product design, 3D printing certificate program. We also have fine new media art students. Students are doing both traditional and 3D, uh, digital 3D printing. And we have 3D printing lab. We also have a uh, big laser cuts. We have CNC machines. We have hollow lens, uh, VR, ER devices, 3D scanners, which, uh, it's pretty good equipment to serve our students. And we sometimes we have financial support for to support research student research, to support them to go to the conference to travel and present their research. And our students have uh, not only product design, but also uh, they have 3D printing certificate program so they can uh, focus on the 3D printing and the technologies. So all of this uh, makes us very strong with, with the both field. And it's a great marriage for both field to work together. And this is an overall view of our 3D printing lab. We have a four color polyjet uh, stratasys 3D printing on the right corner and in the middle we have a metal 3D print powder metal 3D printing. We also have uh, the new Stratasys F three seventy for the aircraft for uh, aircraft uh, application type of three D printing. So it's great too. And recently we just got a new three D printer of the ceramics. So we have another professor from ceramic field. Where we were trying to collaborate for the future for some home goods. So there are a lot of uh, good overlays and opportunities for us and our students. So this allows us to do not only the class project, but also some uh, manufacturing to our customers. And our product design lab, we have a uh, laser cut. Some of the student work and go back to March 2020s, uh, when the whole world is right impacted by the COVID, we had the uh, very severe problems. We're in the shortage of the PPE devices, so we quickly gathered in the labs. Uh, we got like the we got the access right to the lab, so students are not allowed to go go back to campus. But as faculties, we just 
get, uh, went back together, we're trying to uh, create some solutions like PPE solution that can attach the transparent films. So we did uh, produce uh, over 500 pieces within a few days and then we shared. <laughs> both um, 3D printing and vacuum forming for the, the, the face mask. I'm glad uh, the video works. <laughs> Thank you. I should get back to my slide. So most of the work students uh, completed through the, the hybrid mode and because we were not allowed to, to be together, to work together. So it, it's a challenge and learning experience for, for both us and students. And these are students working in the, with uh, prototypes and we got 3D, 3D printing to prototype and test. And another design currently I'm working with is called generative design. So instead of driven by the, um, the, the human mind, where the design is driven by the, the cloud uh, computers, and the generative design is an inter, interdisciplinary area that uh, grab artificial intelligence, um, big data, and also additive manufacturing. So we're trying to uh, incorporate engineering mindset into our, with our students with uh, uh, product design learnings. And we focus on the three different uh, categories. Like drawn design, which is good for lightweight parts. There's a lot of dimensional constraints. And that's well, which is good for, um, if there's very common designs, easy to test for students and toothbrush. And uh, recently we are, we focus more with drawn designs. So the design process starts with finding the existing design uh, on the Amazon. We're trying to uh, res dis let students dis disassemble some of the parts and replace with 3D printed uh, generative design parts. And our website is patched on the uh, bottom. So if you're interested, you can check our website. So on the right side, you can see the different output, design output. And we're trying to compare the performance, the lightweight, and also the stiffness of the, the different designs made by the, the computers. We use uh, Furion 360 software um, for this project. And the quick video show showing the different design outputs. Compare with the different, uh, some designs are more lightweight than the other designs. And because of the 3D printing, we are allowed to print uh, several uh, prototypes and test quickly. 
some student measure the existing uh, design, trying to get some dimensions, um, the cavities to hold the batteries, the board. We're trying to see which one uh, performed the good at the normal as the original design, and even better than the original designs. You can see the different outcomes and you can compare with this. You can get rid of the ones you don't like. So there's a filter systems to help with this process, help you narrow down and get as many as possible designs as you could. And then also, um, not only the research, but I also bring a lot of 3D printing in my uh, class. So for example, one of my class I teach here is called material process. And this is a, a major class uh, for students who concentrate in the product design, you know, who are major in product design concentrations. And one of the very important component is plastics. So we talked about plastics, and thermal set and thermal plastic and where and when we I introduced both subtractive manufacturing and additive manufacturing at this component. So one of our project it's called injection molding hard design project. We're trying to deliver you know injection molding considerations, manufacturing considerations into their designs. So this is some of my background um, related to some of my background. So when I was in company, I'm doing the tooling. Um, I'm a tooling engineer and part designer. So I'm trying to uh, bring those consideration knowledge into my uh, student project. Let them demonstrate the manufacturing and CAD model skills by applying the injection molding guidelines to the like some small project, handheld projects such as dental floss design, pencil sharpeners, remote controls. Uh, baby monitors. So the goal is to improve their design thinking in the manufacturing perspectives. Let them give them the constraints of the manufacturing world and let them convert their design to be more realistic. Understand part design, injection molding, and 3D printing. They need to uh, draft and uh, apply the draft angles to uniform wall thickness, use the ribs, gases, lips, any of the fastening features to make it work, to make it work. And I'm glad uh, this is well, the student work of the, the, yeah, the, the tape dispenser. So you can see how we apply those uh, manufacturing, especially injection molding considerations into the part design. And um, because of the, the limitations, we don't, we don't have the power or capability to, um, to do the, the real injection moldings and it's too expensive, right? And not cost effective for us to do this. So we ended up to 3D printing to test the functions and especially the ribs, right? You need to test the stiffness, the, the dimensions, the functions. So we have so this is a group pictures. All of our students are using 3D printing to test their designs. And they are pretty successful and it allows us to do more revisions based on their test. And one of the designs, uh, the dental floss for the kids. And you can see on the right corner pictures, these are students use grooves, uh, snap hooks, mountain balls and lips right into their designs. Um, and uh, we also learned a lot uh, different 3D printing settings from this project based on their project resolutions. And another design from that class, it's the Lego light design. One of my students is a big Lego fan, Lego builders. So he would like to uh, incorporate, cause, and he observed, right? Lego was produced by injection molding. So he would like to, uh, create a customized light covers. So you can put the light inside light box, right? For this brick. So he is going to, he, uh, his focus is break, break the, uh, create this Lego light cover for 
with Lego pieces. This is based for eight, yeah, the, the very basic commonly see the, the setting of the Lego. And we like to use uh, 3D printing for test ergonomics. So the left side is a foam, traditional foam uh, prototype, and the right side is a 3D printing test. So this is a, a toothbrush prototype for us, uh, for senior citizens. Actually, this was made by one of my friends who is 84, 79, sorry, 79 years old seniors. And some, yes, yeah, to test some ergonomics. These are from the project from the product design one class. And uh, we are very fortunate we might be able to collaborate with one of the local manufacturing called uh, Radius. They are the innovative uh, toothbrush uh, creators. So we might be able to collaborate with them. So students might create some work and uh, print some of the prototypes for them. And another uh, designs, uh, we work with um, another customers and during the internship, yeah, we also, the internship is required for our programs. So students get learn a lot of learning experience from the, uh, from the, the client, from the working at the real world uh, field. This is one of the projects, it's called Tick Remover. So if you go to the Amazon, you will find a lot of different solutions. And this is really a top, top rated uh, sellers. Yeah, they, they are, they call Tick Check. So we're working with uh, tick remover spawns based on their original designs. Yeah, their original their original design was a um, the ball. So we're yeah, I might be able to find here. So this is their original design, and our students revised their design based on, <clears throat> on their three D printed prototype test. So these are their new designs. And our students use the 3D printing to test the, the angle and leverage. Like you can see the comparison between design one, two, three, right? The number one and two have a similar angle maximum, the leverage and the motions of to get rid of the ticks. And the third design is slightly different, limited leverage and motions. So uh, because this project was also completed during 2020, year of 2020, so it's difficult for him to, a lot of business shut down, right? A lot of institutions have limited um, access. So he ended up cannot go to the animal shelter to test this uh, designs, but he finds some ways, right? With paints and um, floors or foams to test this. So the, the movement will stop once the, the fingers touch the surface, right? And the method contains consistency, the leveraging the pins. The higher the pin is to the surface, the better of the performance of the, the tick remover spawns. So this chart showcases the same thing with different angles, with leverage, and then we ended up to go to the second solution and then make it manufactured after the 3D printing prototypes. Okay, so this is pretty much about my presentations and I'd like to open to the, any questions. But before I'm doing that, let me stop my share and I'm glad to chat with all, you, all of you guys. I see that you have a lot of design regarding about all the testing on the drone and also on the tick as well. So for the mm -hmm. drone wise, is it uh, right now very popular in US? Yes, um, I think um, when, when, when we're doing the research, we mm -hmm. find out it's really hard to uh, afford for kids or for, for teenagers. Like the, the price range was pretty uh, wide. Yes. So we're trying to do some very cheap and affordable solutions. And we picked the small ones so it's easy to test also. Yeah, I see that you also use Arduino Bot to do the uh, installations and also do for the testing. Yeah, so well. this is like I mentioned, uh, it's not only design, but we're trying to uh, incorporate uh, engineer mindset mm. because uh, the, the difference between the generative design, traditional design was you need to uh, 
input a lot of like the the engineer consideration like the loads the force mm. yes. dimensions yeah so it's good to see like materials densities that's so very that was good. a lot of that's cooperation into this mm. project thank you and mm. so you can see the uh the, the 3d printing is really a good vehicle for us to deliver our design output from all of these examples Correct for all the prototyping. I think 3D printing is a marvelous thing to have. Yeah, and we have a lot of people, students, um, add a 3D printing certificate program to their um, major. Yeah, their major. So they thought they, they thought their it will make their uh, job hunting very very competitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think 3D printing in US is really the biggest market in the whole world. Yeah, yeah. Um, just uh, go back to Tuesday. I was uh, I also attended one of the events, and they are talking about the new three D printers, with, oh. which was built by the Stratasys. So it seems like they are doing some lot of new ex uh, material explorations. Oh, that's interesting. Because we all know that there's a limited right. There's a, there's always a limited of the materials in the three D printing compared with the traditional injection molding. So they are trying yeah. to make make the manufacturable 3D printers. Mm. That's nice of them. I think it's good because uh, Thank you. there are really a lot of potential of mm -hmm. more advancements that we can look forward to. Right, they, they, were, um, they were doing some 3D printed pieces on the fabrics. That's good to, to know. The, yeah. yeah, it's good to bring to the class. Yeah, 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 of course, definitely. Any uh, other? Yeah, I do have one question. What's the duration of the certificate program in your college? Um, it's about just four classes. Amazing. Four classes of the certificate program. So we have intro to 3D printing class. We have uh, students can select from a large scope of the class, such as product design one class, advanced 3D printing, digital sculptures, material process. So intro to 3D printing is uh, required, but then the three classes can be added on. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's 12 credits, four yeah. classes for the, the certificate program. All right, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your, you know, expertise in terms of product designing and how 3D printing can help uh, in prototyping the different kind of products. I really like the tick design the spoon design because <laughs> yes. i do have a dog and it it gets really tough you know to take out yeah the yeah, yeah to to get rid of the ticks yeah yes yes that's a real and a, real yeah, actually this was made by one of students uh one of the international students so he, he's from brazil oh, yeah and also his major is now if his major is uh business and management. So he was a one of the student who was participant in the uh, 3D printing certificate program. And he ended up uh, allowed to doing this uh, internship. Yeah. Okay. That's, That's good for you. Actually. Yes, yes, because in this way they are solving real time problems. You know, this is a genuine problem yeah, that yeah, you yeah. come across. And that is the beauty of, you know, technology and 3D printing. So mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's a wonderful project, I would say. Lovely. Yeah, uh, their manufacturing, yeah, their final manufacturing, their tooling was made in China, so during that time. So they were, once they finished their 3D printing test, they just uh, deliver our, like, the files into the, the factory. Make sure it, right, it works for the, the, the injection molding. Yeah. So they have started the production, like, mass manufacturing already? Uh, excuse me, uh, what? Have, have the uh, production of the tick remover been... Uh, it's already a productive, it's already product, oh. it's producing very quickly. Yeah, it's on the market um, 2021 in February. Ooh. So it's just after the half year they were on the product, yeah, and they were on the market. Right. Yeah, if I, yeah, I can share with you. Amazon, right? You can see the their original design and uh, you can see 
can see the different designs. So this is this is also their solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the this ones. I've used that one. Yeah. You that? Do you like it? This is our solution. This is the one on the market. Oh. Three. Yeah, this is a design we made. Our student made. I think their original design might be off market. I'm not sure. And does it suggest the, the size of thick? Because sometimes the thick will be even bigger, you know? Right. Size and uh, the, yeah. I agree. So that's what he, um, at the beginning, he wanted to do the research and test in the animal shelters. But yeah, because of the COVID, uh, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of, <laughs> lot lockdowns and constraints. Yes, yes. But anyway, this looks very promising. I, I think, yeah, I'm going to use it for my talk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And also we have a TIC lab, TIC test lab here. So, um, so the, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the, per, yeah, the customers will get a chance to, to, to test their TICs, free oh. test. So oh, they yes. collaborate together. Because, yeah. Yes, because there are different kinds of TICs with different sizes. And yeah, the different know. sizes mm -hmm. yes. and different and types. So which type is more top? Yeah, is there any uh, risk, risk, right, for specific type of ticks? Yeah, so. Very thoughtful, I would say. I would never have thought about this kind of, you know, innovation. But yeah, it's very thoughtful. Yeah, it's a very things. simple design. It's a good uh, top, yeah, to good subject for, for students. Yeah, we're, we're, because of the budget limit, we're trying to do a lot of, like handheld sizes, like I mentioned, uh, tape dispensers, mm -hmm. dental floss. Yeah, we 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 don't do a lot of like large scale projects, so it's really good for for three D printing as our boy. Nice to know. I'm gonna reach out to you on LinkedIn for sure to understand more and more about the project and how you are incorporating three D printing into the designing. I think he's back to you. I I have. Sarah has answered all my questions. Thank so, you, thank you. Nice to meet you. Uh, sweaty, right? Yes, yes. Sweaty, nice to meet you. Okay. And thank you for your feedback. Yeah, thank you so much, Xiaodong. Thanks thank a lot you. for your, your time that you come and share with us sure. the project you've been doing. And it's really inspired the young generation and it's good to have you to help the young generations in understanding the 3D printings and to help them to make their creation become life. It's definitely. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I saw the um, their possibility. I saw the possibilities yes. from the next generations. Yeah. A lot of it's them, when they came to college, they it already doesn't have know how any. to use 3D printing. Yeah, so mm. they have their own 3D printing. Yeah. And it's really good to see that all their work hardships come to life. It's good, it's good. Thank you so much again for the times. Of course, yeah. Appreciate that. And right now, we would like to ask the next speaker, Suwati. And she will share with us. Suwati, are you there? Yes, of course, okay. I am here. Bye. Hi, <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. Okay. And Eve, you are doing uh, an incredible job. There is no need to stress out. Please calm down. You have done a tremendous job, you know, <laughs> coordinating with all the speakers. And, uh, you know, this is the first ever APAC region yes. Women in 3D Please the first one. <laughs> and the credit goes to you. I mean, I would never have pulled out something like this because of different, you know, geographies we are in. And hats off to you, all. Hats off to you because you are doing a great, great job. You are also. Yeah. You have done a lot of webinar in India, and I hope that on our next APEC uh show, we will have you again to come on board. Let's Why do <laughs> and make it bigger. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. Why not? Yeah. Okay, so I hang over the host to you right now. I believe my uh, screen is visible. 
Yes, it is. Just give me a heads up. <laughs> is it visible? Yes, yes, yes it yes. is. Works, right? So yes. let me, yeah. Thank you, Stella. Thank you. So let me, you know, take you through what I have been doing and how I got associated with 3D printing. What motivated me? So. Hello everyone, I am Swati Suman and I am from India, Bangalore and you know, I am a mechanical engineer and then I am a metallurgical and materials engineer as well. So the whole journey to 3D printing was kind of connecting the dots. I had a prior knowledge of okay how the you know uh, mechanical industry, I, I went into the yes, testing field and then I learned more about the materials and then I had an inclination towards 3D printing because it was a mix of robotics and materials which you, which you choose. So that's how I got fascinated and then I started, you know, uh, learning more and more about it. And, you know, here I am and I was so much passionate about this technology that I opened two non-profit organizations, one private limited company so that I can cater to a large pool of audience. So here I will be talking about the art of making foundation. And here what we do is empower women with science and technology. So, you know, the basic idea of a woman being a housewife and doing a regular nine to five job, less women in STEM technology. So there is a, a you know mental bias towards women that okay they are not fit for this kind of job which requires you know physical labor or for that matter you know uh, they cannot be a manufacturer so that was the kind of you know gap we started filling in and we started India's first non-profit organization who is working in 3D printing as of now as we are speaking. So let me take you through what our mission is. So this is our lab back in Dehradun. And our mission is that, okay, one day, at least our girls and women will have equal opportunity to work in AM industry or 3D printing industry. That was the whole mission and vision which we have. And we kind of think that at least give them opportunity to learn because in India as of now there are very limited resources when it comes to you know teaching in rural areas and giving opportunities maybe job opportunities or upskilling opportunities for women who are from underserved community or uh, are, are on a career break or housewives for that matter. This is my wonderful, wonderful team which we have. Shweta Thapa, she is the founder. I and we both met on Women and 3D platform. And that's how this whole, you know, vision came that, okay, we have been into that ecosystem of Women and 3D printing for the last three, four years. We know global uh, companies, global leaders in AM industry, and there is no one from India. So I was the first one who started this Indian chapter, and Shweta was back then leading the New Jersey chapter at that point of time. And we have uh, Army, Army uh, retired Donald uh, Miller, and then Zarudi, Rubina. Everyone has overall experience of more than 20 plus in additive manufacturing. So that's how we all are passionate to work towards empowering women from our rural India to join the workforce with AM, like additive manufacturing is going to provide to them in upcoming future. This is the problem statement which we are trying to figure out. Okay, already there are less jobs because of the industry 4.4 revolution. There are more jobs in IT, software, and you know, a technical uh, um, a technology or infrastructure. So there are already less jobs, and women are again in a in a in, in manufacturing industry, according to the research by GE, uh, General Electric. It's, it's only 12% of the workforce women are there, and they are often judged by their capabilities, or they are not given, uh, you know. Um, opportunities to join such industry. 
and there are no single space for non technical people so suppose i i have done my education in engineering i know the nitty gritties of how things work so i am a technical person i would easily grasp anything but what about people who are not from the technical background how do they enter to to this uh, you know tinkering aspect or making uh, things or innovating things for that matter so that's how we started brainstorming and and we came up with the solution that killing let's start off with the basic killing aspect be it small girls be it you know above uh, above 25 years old uh, woman who is dropped out who has been there in their houses and they want to restart their career what if they just want to uh, make products via 3d printing so it's possible nowadays uh, all they need to do is get get their uh, you know get the learning experience and uh, design products and then do it so a lot of our products are already there in the market so this is how we started that let's start with the low tech so single cat is the very basic software anyone can learn it within a matter of months i would say so this was our solution and this is our lab in dehradun we have and she is shata thapa our founder and this lab is now has now become a manufacturing hub we are doing batch productions over there and whatever things we produce for the for our customers the proceeds the the earned money goes to the education of uh, underserved girls from uh, you know rural areas who cannot afford to have higher education so who do we skill our most uh, you know we prefer girls from underserved community they cannot go uh, go for higher education they have some financial uh, you know uh, resistance to them and then they are college dro- dropouts yeah, they are fine. unemployed and they got married early they had kids and now they have nothing to do what do they do and because they don't have any technical skills now right so that's how we started our training this is one of the training we did for our military troop um although our you know women are our priorities but we were kind of exploring and started teaching our military uh, people as well they were not aware of this technology we started off with our awareness camp and now the full fledged training is going on over there again the training these are the girls who uh, you know dropped out after their um um tenth standard which is like senior secondary in india and they were not able to get jobs so we were kind of grooming them for the jobs as well giving them the skills which they need and this girl uh, already married she had a baby and then she wanted to learn 3d printing how it's going to work again these are the kids from they are actually uh, from you know orphanage um they uh, they don't have anybody they are a part of another non profit organization they the girls which you see are orphans with no family uh, so we chose to train them as well we have done plenty of online training for our uh, students across the country because online is the medium via which we can be anywhere so these uh, certain schools uh, reached out to us to provide training so we have done those kind of training these are the trainings at a rural village in india they had already printers they learned how to operate the 3d printer it was just a learning aid for them to understand the technology better uh, and at the same time they were able to do a lot of uh, school projects via 3d printing right this is one of the interesting uh, studies so this is with the rural artisans they were uh, in the right side you can see that these this is a soap mold earlier they were not able to you know put a branding to it but with the help of 3d printing we could add the you know logo of their local art this way we were kind of able to preserve the local art because the traditionally which were they were they were doing was not uh, you know having any sort of branding 
terms of how we started giving training and how do we implement how do we reach out to these girls how do we shortlist how do we provide internship so i'm going to tell you about the brief brief of all you know the journey which we go through first of all we categorize the women should be from underserved community they should have a basic computer knowledge and then if they don't have computer knowledge we teach them for one month to gain that digital literacy and then again they train us with us for another 6 months and then we give them internship for another 6 months in the in the area of their choice because we have a partners in india they are working in jewelry architecture modeling our uh, toy industry at the same time um, uh, you know uh, the basic uh, uh, prototyping uh, companies are also there designing companies so we give out these girls to them to get hands on training to get industrial exposure so that they are job ready by the end of one year so one year is the duration which we we take uh, to our girls so that they are trained for a job after they finish we give them the certification we do a basic assessment for these girls that okay now you are ready we recommend them to our industry partners in approximately we have 75 companies 3d companies in india they are catering to indian market and we have uh, now we have started manufacturing a 3d printer here as well so that's why the cost are coming down here in india and that's the leverage which we have we you know we um now it's very cheap for us to try out the printer and since we are a non profit organization you know uh, uh, industry people they are kind enough to donate us the printers the filaments they do that option so we do have a, a great so how we operate so there is a need of job in the market they all the all they need is the skill development and then they want to earn a livelihood out of it they should be uh, you know upgraded and upskilled so that they have access to more jobs in am industry so in another 5 years there is there, there will be another 3.2 million jobs coming in in additive manufacturing and the conventional manufacturing processes as well so and the fears which the the girl has is like okay there are very less opportunities for me being a girl uh, i will not be given an opportunity to work in a manufacturing firm or a designing firm uh, so when i talk about manufacturing industry i am talking about the conventional manufacturing like a steel plant or or a different you know a, a big industry where physical labor is of importance but with the onset of 3d printing even a woman can do the designing and they can definitely work uh, with a desktop model of 3d printer at the comfort of their house and they can even be an educator they can even be a product maker they can be their own boss that's how we are empowering women in india and how do we do that we give them the skills we give them access to the printers we give them access to the industry that okay you go and learn things from different industry so healthcare is again booming in india so we we uh, try to put in more girls in the healthcare industry as well so skill gap has been an issue uh, not just in india because 3d printing is a new technology it's everywhere so these are the gaps in the uh, you know different sectors that uh, so the main challenge we are facing so we we do get queries from industries that we want to upskill our current employees how do we do that so we we pitch in we upskill their employees and since the top companies uh, is aerospace and automobile healthcare research and development jewelry toy real estate so these are the markets and these are the top top um, uh, you know industries who use be discussing very widely but at the same time uh, there are other industries who are kind of growing and awareness has been one of the challenges which we have faced that okay people even don't know that this can be done 
way easily by 3D printing. If I have to just do batch production, there is no need of going via injection molding process. So this is how we reached out to our uh, girls. We do a lot of field visits. We go online. We do conferences as well. Our annual conferences are there. We partner a lot. That is our main USP. We partner a lot across the globe, not just in India. We have our advisors across the globe. They help us out. And local outreach collaboration is the main key of our operation. And that is helping out, out very well for us. Um, and when you come to how do we deliver the training, so we give online training. And at the same time, when it comes to the hands-on uh, experience learning, we send them to us, uh, the nearby location of any online learner, because we have every part of the uh, country, India, we have our partners. So if I am in Delhi, I will, I will assign a nearby training partner to you so that you can go to their lab, learn hands-on, uh, you know, product designing and 3D printing. So hands-on learning and tinkering happens via our channel partner. And on-site, we have different centers across the country. You can come there and learn. Then we do a lot of product manufacturing, and then we put them online and retail shop. And social media has been one of the blessings for us because via that, we are getting a lot of orders now for these girls. And whatever orders we get, these, these are the girls who make them. So whatever revenue we are generating via selling the product, that goes back to the education of these girls. Um, so that's an interesting thing. And this is a learning map. We just not train them on 3D printing. It's a whole process, I would say. We teach them how to solve a problem. First of all, define a problem. Do the design thinking step first. And then, you know, give the skills. How do you, uh, you know, uh, search on internet, how do you communicate the problem, how do you present and how how you can be your own boss by the end of this learning journey. So this is the whole journey which we come across. It starts with the two weeks, the basic one. After one month, you will be familiar with design thinking, a bit of repositories like uh, Thingy World, Make My Factory, so after that, 3D software will, uh, Thinkercad, we will start introducing you to the Thinkercad, then slicing software, then uh, 3D printing, troubleshooting is uh, again, uh, uh, you know, a big chunk of our education goes into the troubleshooting aspect, then you learn product making, product finishing, then how do you spell it, what are the platforms you have to be, uh, you know, present on in order to sell your product. That's again social media marketing. After six months, they are in a place to go for another six months to gain industrial industrial uh, you know exposure, where they work with the healthcare industry to work on the medical implants, how they do all the uh, you know surgery planning. So that's that's just one example when it comes to healthcare. But again, toy industry, home decor. That's unlimited I would say and by the end of one year you can be either an educator you can have a, your own full fledged center training center to work and at the same time you can be your own boss by the end of one year these are the few products which our girls have made uh, jewelry then corporate gifts are you know one of the bigger chunk uh, when, when corporate helps us that, okay, these products are being made by girls to support us a lot, home decor products, and you know, the, the list is endless. You can print anything and everything if you have access to different kind of materials and printers. So those are, you know, the printing products which we have done. Uh, you can get in touch with us on these email IDs. This is our website. And I would definitely uh, recommend if you are looking out for the solutions for, you know, curriculum in architecture or home decor, because we design our curriculum based on the product. 
as uh, Stella rightly said earlier that you know how she is using 3D printing to innovate the designing and that's a very smart way to work around uh, 3D printing I would say. So thank you so much everyone. I think that takes me to the end of the presentation. Hope uh, you guys didn't sleep. Are you guys there? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Okay. Right, thank you so much, Swadi. And you have done a great help to help those people uh, in India, those women who wanted to get into these STEM educations and yeah. to help them really uh, let their dreams become realistic and become their own bosses doing all the creative designs and etc. Which right, very good. It's really inspired me. <laughs> you need a yes. part-time uh, teacher, I can just go over and help, of course. <laughs> Definitely, I would love that. I would love that. I am looking out for you know, teachers so that we have a mix of uh, people from different backgrounds. Uh, it would be, you know, a life saving, I would say. Thank yeah, you so I'm much. also an industry trainer in a uni. Wow. So, yep. Oh. Our talk to you soon okay yes why yeah not? if you just need my help i can just help okay that would be so great yeah Thanks. thank you so much so and i'll be happy to answer any questions yeah. or any questions you know? uh any speaker wanted to ask swati please kindly step forward yeah because i was kind of fascinated with the tony's work and uh, stella's work yeah. the kind of work that they are doing is incredible Okay. Yeah, just uh, see. Swati, I think it's very inspiring and uh, I can really see what you did for the, the women, the, the female community, especially the, for the next generations. I really appreciate your your effort and support. Okay. I, I, in the US, I, I can see the gaps, like in, even in the design professional job marketing, I think there's only 20% of female that can continue pursuing the, the design education, so there is really a gap. Mm -hmm. I think and all over the world. Yeah. Uh, I think they are perceived in a different way, and maybe because we share a lot of responsibility, um, I feel it's a very, you know, worldwide thing which happens everywhere. Often women are not given that kind of opportunity because they think that okay right because of some of yeah, yes. some of the yeah yes. i think that's so true everywhere i've been speaking to a lot of people and every field i would say it's not just about the manufacturing mm -hmm. even if you go and yeah you know they they assume that okay a girl should always take social sciences arts culture literature i mean they just you know, there is a gender bias in the way of thinking itself. Like, why if somebody wants to innovate things, why, why not? So yeah, there is a certain kind of mental conditioning which women are conditioned to. That okay, this right. is the only job, job opportunity I have, and they don't think that big. So now we are kind of we are the you know faces, and we have to kind of inspire the younger generation. The responsibility is on us. That's okay. We are there to support you, and then yeah, we're we'll on the backstage. Have. Yeah. Yes. Why not? Why not? And I also like your delivery model, the the flex, how the flexibility of the, the delivery mo model, because you know some yeah, I can imagine some of the kids have the limited right the access to the the, the on site yeah. trainings. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, they, yeah, we have different partners for different reasons. So one one which is accessible, you know, near nearby to their house. So we have made that kind of ecosystem within two years. Oh, that's and good too. Yeah, so they can yeah. get access to their local. They can get access. Yeah, that's and good. they don't need to have a laptop or internet connection all the time. If they want to learn, just go to your nearby center, learn, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Swati. I also yeah. have uh, a question. Yeah. I first yeah. of all, um, thank you for the great works. Really amazing. <laughs> thank you. 
especially for empowering the women and, and girls. That, that's so, something that uh, uh, developing countries uh, are looking for. Uh, so uh, how many women have you targeted so far, trained? 347 students so far. And this was a mixture of army people as well. So it's 370, approximately 370 uh, students we have. They come from different backgrounds, different age groups. So collectively, 370 you know, uh, students from online learning, from uh, on-site training, workshops, uh, six year, six months courses. Collectively, we have trained that, and we are kind of by the end of uh, this year, we are targeting okay 500 in one year. We have to kind of train and successfully, you know, place or give jobs to at least 50 of them. 50 is our, you know, target. We should provide jobs to 50 of these trained women in one year. Wow, that's something amazing because your program, you know, you're empowering women through education and employment at the same time. That's something very incredible. Please, good luck. Keep up. Thank you so, so much. So impressive. Yeah, yeah. I, and uh, yes. I, I do have a great team, uh, so that's why you know we are able to achieve. And I would happy to help you, Tony, as well, uh, in case you need any help when it comes to you know maintenance of your city center or you are facing any difficulty in a curriculum, uh, whatever you are training. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. So that we can help you because you are also working towards women from under the community will be happy to help and we are here to help everybody <laughs> you know uh, it's just it's yeah. a global platform uh, you know it's a global nonprofit which we have and we help everyone so you know feel free to ask for help we will be there to help you out right thank you so much yes thank you thanks Eve. really appreciates that all of you that have attended and help out in our APEC uh, webinar and really appreciate that. It really helped to inspire a lot of young generations after this event and hope that more people can get into 3D printing and like Suwati and Tony, they have been doing all the charity educations that are helping the younger generations to get into 3D printing and without spending a, a huge uh, amount on that which really appreciate and Anna and Xue Dong she, they have been doing uh, educations in helping the young generations to let their project become realistic this also inspired a lot of young generations that get into by educations and study and research and uh, experience and become their own bosses by the end of the course right so yeah. really appreciate that all of you that have come about with us and if you really have any questions do feel free to ask okay and we will like this uh, webinar I will trim it and uh, amend it a bit and to let it go online to the Uber in 3D printing the uh, website so hopefully thank you all for coming today appreciate that thank you so much Eve, for having us thank you for putting us together yeah. yes and um, today so uh, Maria Steve. actually has thanks for hosting such event <laughs> and Today, uh, Maria has a uh, feel sick and she can't attend our webinar today. So hopefully in the next round, we'll have her to join us again. Okay? Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate that. Bye. See you soon. See you. you. Bye. Bye.